everybody what's going on welcome back to another new video i feel like i'm forgetting something ah this is a brook lottie the classic lottie a phenomenal peated scotch perfect thing to go along with uh, a window manager i guess <laughs> Uh, more specifically, what I wanted to take a look at is uh, DWM again, which uh, may be slightly surprising if you're a consistent viewer of my channel. Thanks, by the way. But uh, not just normal DWM. What I was looking at was uh, just downloading D -D DWM uh, from the Suckless website and then building it myself, uh, doing whatever configuration I wanted. Maybe two earbuds would be helpful here. Adding whatever patches I wanted, building the app on my own, which eh, in theory is how you're meant to do it. And this has generally been my approach to Linux in general. Uh, when I started using Vim, uh, I didn't go and find VimRC and download it. I built it all on my own. It took a while, but I got somewhere good eventually. You know, even just picking Arch Linux as the OS is uh, not really necessarily the best idea for everyone, but uh, it seemed like the way to go for me. I'll build everything I want, build exactly the kind of system I want. That's one of the best advantages of Linux. Why not uh, dive in fully? And that's a pretty good way to go, but I think it's also maybe important to not forget that there are a whole lot of other people ricing apps, and uh, maybe it's not always completely necessary to build everything from scratch yourself. Like, there's definitely people out there who've done something probably similar to what you want to do, especially if it's a popular app like Vim, or in this case, DWM. And one of the things that I did find slightly frustrating about DWM is that it can be incredibly tedious. Now, to be clear, this is a great window manager, and I wouldn't actually really call it hard to install. I think I mentioned before in a video that I installed DWM on a laptop that I run Solus on and it was super easy and it would have been maybe more difficult to install something like Awesome that isn't in the repo by default. I mean, not really. You'd have to download the source code and build it yourself, but that's the thing. If you're messing with DWM at all, you're gonna be building it. So you already know what you're expecting. So maybe you perceive it as easier. I don't know that it actually is. I don't know. Anyways, really what I'm gonna take a look at is something here called a uh, void window manager. This is, uh, I don't know who makes this because their name is uh, an alias, uh, void starsh. But uh, yeah, the guy left it in uh, the comment section of the uh, first video I made about DWM. And uh, I actually did end up checking it out and it's, it's, it's pretty dope. So I'm gonna go into my uh, folder here. I'm just cloning it real quick. And uh, I thought we could take a look at it. Uh, this seems like a great way to go to me. All the things that are tedious, about DWM, having to go in, find all the different patches that you'd want to install, having to actually install them. The installing patches doesn't always work as well as you would expect it to. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Whereas here, somebody's already come through and they have a build of it that includes quite a few patches that they'll mention here and added some like quality of life features, added a lot of things that you probably would want to add. I mean, I mean, for me, this actually looks kind of <laughs> pretty similar to uh, uh, something I would want to build. Th this is using the D menu bar. I forget if that has a specific name, the, the bar that's there by default in D menu, but it, you will notice this is a complete coincidence. It does look remarkably similar to the poly bar that I've uh, built as I've been using Linux. So uh, that's not the only similarity there. There's also a few other things that they do to DWM that I did immediately swapping out the mod key. Uh, some of the patches that they've installed or patches that I definitely want to install gaps, that kind of thing. Let's uh, let's go ahead and jump over there. Uh, we need to build it, of course, before we can boot into it. So I'm going to uh, CD into that folder. It is the uh, void window manager folder. And uh, then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I think if we take a look here, they actually don't have the config.def.h file, which is how I was editing DWM and all the suck apps before. I was like editing the config.def.h and then building it. I'm not actually 100% sure why there's two different config files that are edited a lot in these. I don't know if maybe I was building uh, the apps wrong this whole time. I'll have to uh, look more into that. Uh, but yeah, with this build of DWM, we're going to be editing the config.h file and then just building the app. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hop into that config.h file. And uh, I mean, really, there's not a ton that I'll want to change. Like I said, this looks pretty close to what I would want to do. The one thing I do want to do is I know because of the resolution that I'm recording at, I'm going to have to jack up the uh, font sizes here. And uh, while I'm here, I might as well go ahead and just pipe in my own fonts that I lurk <laughs> like. Yeah, you know, whatever. We'll go full uh, like mono space fonts over the whole bar here. Why not? And then uh, border pixel. What is border pixel? 
that is either the gaps or no, it's not the gaps. Okay, so the border pixel I think is the actual pixel on the window. I'm gonna kill that. I uh, am not a uh, like border on windows type of person. Hey, look, if I move this window up a little bit, you can see my Vim configuration. Uh, we can manually adjust the bar height. Might as well uh, do that too. I'll make it a bit uh, bigger. Uh, that'll look better on the old uh, screen recording. And then we can actually set gaps. Set both of these first two values here to one, which should just make sure that there are gaps regardless of whether or not there are multiple windows being displayed. One of the things that I noticed when I was playing around with DWM before is, is it like to have no gaps if there was only one window, which I was sort of into. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it on for now. And then uh, also there's about a million different values for uh, so what is this? Horizontal inner gap between windows, vertical inner gaps between windows, and horizontal. Ooh, I see what's going on here. I think uh, for demonstration purposes, let's set both of these first two values to 20, and this should be the like inner gap in between windows, if I'm reading this correctly. And then the outer gap, these last two values, should be like the gap around the outside of the whole window in between like the... Uh, I'm not 100% sure why I would want that. But hey, you know what? Hey, maybe it'll look cool. Let's uh, let's turn it on. Why why not? It's a feature, right? And then uh, we can jack with the color schemes. Looks like you can change the icons here pretty easily, and that's cool. Uh, define a browser, Firefox. Define an app menu, the menu. Oh, and I guess we can change the terminal over to Kitty, which I'm using here. Uh, I'll just make sure. Uh, I don't care. Whatever. Okay, that probably looks good. So we can go ahead and do sudo make install or I don't remember if I have D menu installed. I'll do sudo make clean install just in case I have a different. I'm pretty sure I don't have the one. Well, all right, sudo make clean install. And hopefully this builds with no errors. That's the first step in the right direction. Uh, one other thing I do want to do because I am a user of a uh, light DM all of a sudden out of nowhere. This isn't necessary. You can go into your home folder and create an XNet RC, and this is probably the way to go, and you just want to have it execute DWM to start. And then you just, whenever you're in the TTY, you literally just run start X, or I think XNet, and it will start the thing. I, I know you can do start X, I'm pretty sure you can do uh, XNet also. But what we can do, if you're using a uh, login manager, is you can go into a folder, and I'm gonna copy some stuff here because I'm lazy, and you're gonna wanna go into, your cds into slash user share x to do, do, do sessions and you can see there are a few different entries in here uh one for awesome window manager and actually there's one for void window manager that i already created which i will remove that and pretend like that didn't happen uh sudo remove and what you need to do is create a new file which you can do by saying touch and call it dwm or void window manager or who gives a fuck dot desktop and uh, yeah people like to point out that if you're using vim as a text editor you can also just type in the name of the uh, file and create a new file that way everybody people know that i'm just trying to make it easier for anyone who's not using vim and maybe relatively new to linux you can touch is how you create a file but you can also use a text editor and create a new file most of the time certainly you can with vim um let's give that maybe a, a proper name okay so once you have that file you just need to uh literally paste in this bit right here you can do a desktop entry, and then you're going to do encoding equals UTF-8. Yeah, I don't know why I'm typing this all right here. Just to do this, exactly what this looks like. Hey, I'll uh, maybe leave it in the description if I remember. Important things here, title of the window manager right here, name right there, Isaac, and icon. I would imagine this is really the most important thing that you want to get right, and you could sort of change the name and the comment and the icon or something else if you wanted to like display the i3 icon to launch DWM for some reason, huh? Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, but I think we're probably good to, what the fuck is going on here? Oh yeah, sudo invimvoid.desktop. You need to do this as sudo because it is in the uh, root directory. Okay, now, I think we're good to go ahead and quit out of good old awesome here. So uh, immediately, this looks much better than the uh, config that I was working with. There's a few sort of weird things. Uh, it looks like uh, there's a button up here that lets us change tiling layouts. Um, that's actually one of the things that was mentioned on the GitHub page for the um, window manager here. Uh, was that they have a keyboard shortcut built in to swap between different tiling layouts, which generally speaking, uh, I think I've been known to just sort of pick one layout and uh, lock down a window manager to just that one layout. Uh, and that's 
maybe not a terrible way to work, but more recently I have been sort of just enabling a whole bunch of different layouts and, and going from there. So let me figure out what the keyboard shortcut is real quick. Cycle through layouts with mod shift tab. Um, so for example, this right here is sort of generally speaking, the normal layout that I would use. I think this is called like a master and stack layout. You can sort of see how it works. If we open up more windows, it starts you off with one. And then uh, as you open up more windows, it's going to make one sort of the master by the way, DWM and awesome work by default. The most recent window is the master. And then uh, just sort of every other window you open is going to be opened up over to the side in a stack. And I kind of like that. And the reason why is because it's really easy to just resize it and shift stuff around really easily. I, I know how to work and it works really well. It's, it's very manageable because it's super simple, uh, but there are other layouts that are handy. And so if we were to do a command shift tab here. We could sort of cycle through some of those or what was it? Was it uh, mod shift tab? Yeah, so mod shift tab. You can sort of see here we have sort of a spirally layout. I don't know what you call that. Uh, and then you got a uh, reverse spirally layout. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I think it's stacking a whole bunch of shit on top. I don't like that one. Uh, this looks like a full screen thing. Uh, I don't know what's going on there either. Let's maybe close a window and see what happens. Oh, it looks like it's just keeping something hidden in the background. That's weird. I don't like that. That's sort of the reason why I didn't want to fuck with a lot of these because some of them. Oh, what's that? that look, oh, I think that might be the one that's in the like GitHub image, this sort of center master. And then it opens up two different uh, sort of stacks is what it looks like to me. Yeah, that's kind of wacky. Um, um, I could get into that perhaps. I do write a lot and so I, I could kind of get down with this being in the middle. But yeah, this, that's that's a really, really nice feature. The gaps we did set, I accidentally set them so that if I only have one window open, it has no gaps. That's easy fix. One thing I do like about this build of DWM is that it has keyboard shortcuts for basically everything I was looking before I turned the screen recording back on after I booted into DWM. And there are keyboard shortcuts to like, do just about everything you could want that I saw in some crazy stuff here. Like there, there's a keyboard shortcut to toggle gaps. If I, here, let me open up another window. And apparently if I do mod key G, I can turn the gaps on and off. That's incredible. I can also just resize them. It looks like so I could do command plus or minus to make the inner or outer gaps bigger. That's freaking wild. And then maybe what is it? Command shift to do it in the opposite direction. Yeah, I can do the same thing here. Command shift, increase the inner gap. And it's like, I don't even know why I would want to do that, but that's an incredible level of control that it gives you over the aesthetics, sure, but also the actual functioning of the window manager by being able to swap through the layouts. And and there's a few other things that I could edit. So for example, I'm gonna, let's uh, see here. Let's go into my polybar config. And I could pull down my own icons for these up here because I don't really, I'm not this organized. So I could grab the icon that I like to use. That's that one right there. And then if I want to, I could just sort of replace all of their icons with my better one. Uh, probably not. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so this is, this is cool. I wanted to touch on a few of the other things here that they were saying. Um, so saying you can have a system control in the bar with the bar modules patch. Oh, which I have actually seen this. I wanted to look into it. This is not actually on the Suckless website, I don't think. It's sort of an independent patch, which is another one of the weird things about DWM. Even if you go through the whole Suckless app and just browse through all of the patches that they have, there's all sorts of stuff outside of the Suckless website that doesn't get put on there for whatever reason that you can also uh, use to customize the window manager. So this one's cool. This is, uh, I'm not trying to compare it to like Polybar, but it, it makes customization pretty much the same way. You can see here, if we take a look at these rules, you can align things to the left and the right, presumably the center somehow, uh, the same way that you can with a uh, polybar. So that something worth looking at. I think that's his own video if we want to dive deeper there. Oh, uh, the other thing is it reads extra sources for colors and border pixels and bar heights and stuff, uh, which I don't know that normal DWN does. I think mod shift R I accidentally hit earlier. If I do command shift R, it's like it distributes all the uh, windows across different tags, which that in theory could be kind of cool. I don't know. I found it a bit annoying in that example. And it also looks like the turning off the gaps might be just for one window at a time. Oh, no, never mind. Okay. But uh, again, I don't even know why I would want that feature, but I liked that it's there. 
more options is, is, is literally never a bad thing. And it also looks like it's trying to like make it easier to use on a laptop or whatever, which is great. Uh, window managers are great on a laptop. I, I use a window manager on my desktop, but I always have one installed on uh, my laptop uh, as well, which for a while has been running Solus and I was... Uh, stuck using um, i3 because that's sort of what's in the repository and I didn't want to do a ton of work to get it to work. Uh, but this I was able, able to install in uh, like uh, 30 seconds. So that's great. I, you know, added the entry uh, so that it would show up in LightDM like I showed you earlier. That's what Solus uses by default. And uh, I'm all set. So this is cool. There's obviously other builds of DWM and this isn't normally how I'd like to operate. Well, actually, that's not true. There's nothing wrong with uh, starting this way, starting with work that someone else has done. I mean, if you're using an app, you're using work that someone else has done. It's like, why would you need to build the entire config yourself? You didn't build the app yourself. There's certainly nothing wrong with using other people's configs and then just customizing it to your extent. And I don't know that this is really perfect in my head. I'll uh, mess around with it a bit more, but this is a really great starting point and uh, much more usable. I mean, DWM on its own was already fine. I, I didn't really have an issue with it, but this is phenomenal. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Three leaks down the soft side of where you left my gold rose crown. You broke down and left me with a chest hum, a black gun, and $40. Chest hum, a black gun.